the education of the whole person in the life of Christ means what's happening in the classroom, what's happening in the hallways, what's happening in our clubs and activities and right. our libraries, and in our extracurricular. And I think it's important for our teachers that there is a difference to Catholic schools. Catholic schools have a more human-centered approach. Um, so much of uh, the workaday world, um, Joseph Pieper talks about the uh -huh. workaday world, is so function-focused. It's about the, the, the end product or the result, and it loses that human element. Um, and so as you have a child who's falling behind, um, as we're talking about ways to train teachers and support teachers, so much of new education research is talking about these concepts of teaching to mastery, which is if a child's falling behind, letting them have those opportunities where they can come back uh -huh. again, and making ourselves available so that Different students learn on different days in different ways. And so how we have to be prepared to sort of set up our curriculum and our design for that to really allow for some students don't learn the same way as one another. And we're training them for a workforce or a job force that is totally uncharted in anything that we've seen before so that they can come with the critical thinking skills and the, the self-awareness, the self-reflection to say, you know, who am I as a person? How do I fit into this broader scheme of the world? The jobs will change, the, the, right. the, the functions will change, but, but we need to make sure that we know who we are, because that helps set our students up for success. Now, because it's a Catholic school, it doesn't mean that they don't teach all the different things that the public schools teach, as far as science and languages and so forth. Would you elaborate a little bit about that, the different languages that you have, and, and, the, and the science courses? Sure, sure. We, we have a full suite of science courses. In fact, we have also an engineering a program as well. So we have physics, chemistry, or or part environmental science at the AP level, ecology, uh, genetics class. So the full suite of science classes and a very robust uh, lab program too. All of our our labs are are new and spectacular. As a longtime science teacher, I'm a little envious of the science teachers who get to use these labs every day. They, they are awesome. And our language program, we have German, Latin, Spanish, and French. And all the way up through the AP level and all of those as well. So they, again, as John has mentioned, we teach all of these classes, but we teach them with the idea of the focus on the Catholic identity and how oh, this okay. is ingrained yeah. in there. Colleen has done quite a bit of work in starting to develop to make sure we have a systematic approach of teaching with the Catholic identity in place. Uh -huh. So uh, maybe Colleen can speak to it on a, on a more like brass tax level, but I can say that on the design process, I teach American literature. Every American literature student in the whole wide world is reading Huckleberry Finn, and they should be. It's maybe the best book ever. Um, <laughs> but there has to be a fundamental difference about how a Catholic school is able to talk about that great book. Uh -huh. Because even in great public schools, and I'm a public school student myself, um, we talked about racism, we talked about human dignity and justice yeah. and, and, and this idea of systemic racism and poverty. So those conversations are happening in the public schools. So what is the difference that a, a parent can expect when they're sending a child to um, a, a Catholic education? And at, at, at O'Connell High School, what is the, the unique opportunity that our curriculum presents that says there's a fundamental difference in the way that we both select our, 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 our materials and in how we sort of present or, or, or I guess navigate them. I mean, Colleen, you want you to speak to that? Yeah, I mean, I think a big difference is you know all of our students are called to live in this world, right? But not be of the world. And I think this is part of the new evangelization that our Pope has called us to. This idea of encounter, you know, as we called about, you know, the, talking about the theology of encounter, encountering the world, but also, in, you know, thinking about what are the good things the world has to offer and what are things that we as Christians can bring to it, um, always seeking truth and wisdom and goodness in a way that kind of pushes off the relativism that you might find, um, you know, in a school that's not Bishop O'Connell. Well, so, but that we have the truth, right? And we can, yeah. we can don't seek it. do you also it. have a, uh, uh, a summer camp and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. what, what is that about? I, I thought I saw it in the Herald there last week. Uh, you we have a number of summer programs going on. A lot of them are related to uh, different athletic teams. Uh -huh. We certainly offer some academic programs during the summer. We, we have some uh, academic programs working towards students coming into the school, getting a taste of the high school classes to make sure they're up to speed for English or math. Uh -huh. We have uh, computer science classes and personal branding class so students understand how to have a presence on the internet in a healthy way and not get themselves in trouble which young kids can do on the internet pretty quickly mm -hmm. and we have a full full load of a athletic programs as well through football 
baseball, volleyball, and basketball. We also have students doing short-term mission trips. Mm -hmm. So we have students going yeah. to Peru this year, what they went last year, and actually it was amazing. I got to be with them. They're building houses for people. So they're taking the really? things that they're learning in their classes and, and you know, in terms of like culture, language, theology, and then they're putting them into place. Now can I ask the magic question? There's people sitting out there watching this show and maybe they're not Catholic, but they would like to send their son to O'Connell High School or their daughter. Um, tell us a little bit, give us some, some sure. insight there. So O'Connell, uh, it's a too long of a story for our show to sort of how it came into being and so on. Early on it was a, sc a school filled up by six parishes that largely all the kids came from there and it probably was almost 100% Catholic. Uh -huh. Today it's about 80% Catholic students, 20% non-Catholic. Most of those students are Christian but not Catholic, but without exception in my experience in 10 years, uh, everyone, every family that comes to O'Connell, they come to look at what we're talking about, they come to our open no, house. No discrimination. Uh, absolutely. Oh, no. They, they want, what, once they get to know O'Connell and they decide they want to come and they become part of the, the, the total experience that we have. Mm -hmm. So It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I see in this one here you have some free stuff. What's this here? This so, yeah, this might be a good segue into talking about where we're headed next. Uh, this is the groundbreaking in 1956, April of 1956. You can see the IHM sisters are present, uh -huh. the uh, Christian brothers are present, the Diocese of Richmond is present, and I think over here is a relatively early photo of uh, student leadership in 1957 at the early beginning. So again, we're 60 years old, we've got a 60-year-old building, and we've got awesome plans for where we're headed next. So we're, we're engaged right now in a campaign uh, to take on the first two steps of our master site plan. In about, by 2020, we will have a, a new wing on the, on the Trinidad Street side of our school. Oh, and okay. out of that, out of that uh, wing on the first floor will emerge a beautiful chapel that's designed in a, uh, like an Irish stone chapel coming out of the side of the building. And it'll be the first time we've had a, a chapel uh, that it was not some re, uh, repurposed space uh -huh. inside the building. It's very exciting. We've got great support from the diocese. Well, I know that your track and field and football field is all up to date with modern AstroTurf, the whole bit. Well, yes. I, I want to point out, too, sports as ministry is a big piece of it. Uh, two summers ago, we had the chance to present at the University of Notre Dame with the um, Play Like a Champion Today sports initiatives, ministry of sport and sports <laughs> as ministry. Um, the average student is in my class for one year, and maybe I get them 180 hours over the course of that year. The average student if they're a part of an athletic team, is with that coach for four years, and maybe at the varsity level, they're meeting with them three, four, five times a week or more. So how important it is that our ministry extends beyond the, the, the physical It's classroom. more than just the books. Very much so, very Absolutely. much so. Yeah. yeah, sure, it's wonderful. Yeah. I'm so glad you had a chance to come on and talk about Oklahoma High School. Thank Was you. there one more, anything you'd like to say now? We got about 30 seconds left. Anybody wants to en end up the show with a, a, a comment? Well, first, just to say once again, we're really appreciative of you uh, giving us this opportunity and that you have this venue and forum for talking about Catholic life. And we, we're, uh, well, as a team of folks uh, engaged in trying to help young people in their Catholic life, we're grateful for the chance to talk about it. Thank you very much. I'd reach out and shake hands with each one of you. Thank but you. this is too inconvenient. Folks, you know, thank you very much for coming on. And uh, I know I have somebody over there that I, uh, I, th I think I should mention it. My son has been teaching over there for how many years now? 24, 25 years. About right. Yeah. Yes, Boomer's still over there. But anyway, folks, you know we're all living on this planet Earth. We have nowhere else to go. And while we're here, let us all be a little more kind and faithful, courteous and understanding and loving to each other every day in our work and in our play. And on that note, so long and God bless. The funding for this program was made possible by a grant from the Diocese of Arlington, established in 1974 by Pope Paul VI. You know, the Arlington Diocese has 69 parishes, five missions, covering 21 counties, and has two Catholic colleges, five Catholic high schools, and 43 elementary schools. They're all now under the leadership of His Excellency Bishop Michael F. Burbage. For more information, contact arlingtondiocese.org.